What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire with my man, Eric Sheet Tabor. We are going to be talking a little NBA basketball tonight. Did pretty well last night. Um, nice to have a little little profitable night, uh, just barely. But uh, but still felt good to at least have like some, you know, some decent -ish chances down the stretch. I had a lot of Reggie Jackson, which really helped. I was sort of the guy I was, you know, trying to get that ceiling game from. Couldn't get it right with uh, with Embiid or Valanchunas. Otherwise, it might have been a really big night. But uh, still, overall, a good night. Sheets, I understand that you finally are yes. a losing night. Yes, losing night. And and, and I, I didn't waste the losing night, man. I wasn't even close anywhere. It wasn't, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so uh, I'll tell you what really put me on, too. So I added a three. I did a three-teamer on freaking prize picks, okay? Mm -hmm. One of them was just never in doubt. It was, like, just a stone lock. It, it looked a little bit worse at the end, but it, was, it really wasn't. I had... Uh, Demontis Sabonis under five and a half, um, four and a half assists, five and a half assists. And he had one with like a minute to go in the game. He ended up with like three extras, whatever. So that one. And then I had those two three point ones that I talked about. I had Lonzo under two and a half and Harden over two and a half. And it was funny. Lonzo hit two threes in like the first quarter or something like that. I'm, okay. That's so much for this one. And, and Harden had like zero actual points for like 23 minutes of the game. Right. Yeah. And right out of the second half, um, Harden had, had one three to end the first half, and he made his two threes. So Harden was done. Sabonis was done. No, wait, Harden didn't only made two threes, though, last night. No, I think he had three. No, I'm pretty sure. Hold on. I'm not, I'm not totally sure. I was, I'm pretty I was sure, sure he made the third one. Okay, you might be right. You're probably right then. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you then. I think so. Oh, I, I just must have gotten it mixed up because I swear I thought I was uh, – I thought we were – I thought we would talk about this today, and I thought he made two, but I, you're, you're probably right. I don't know. Um, and then, um, and then, uh, so I'm sitting here, I'm anti-sweating Lonzo and Lonzo, he, he let me off the hook, like the whole game after, after he made those first couple, he didn't even take one. I'm like, Oh, come on. One time, one time. And then I thought I was I'm in trouble because they were down 10, but looks like a minute to go. But Oh no, they're going to take threes. They're going to take threes. And then I saw it. They found him open in the corner and I just knew it was going down. And it did. Oh, no, <laughs> I didn't realize Harden actually made a bunch at the end, but it, wow, that's a yeah. that, I mean, because I was looking for a while and he was stuck yep. at the, I thought yep. they were going to actually pull their starters. Yep. Um, well, anyway, well, on to anyway, the, on, on, onward and upward. Onward and upward. Um, I'm going to let you uh, sh share your screen here and uh, we can go game by game and talk through the sort of first thoughts. I thought that the process was pretty good last night with what we were talking about. Um, there was a few things that happened even after I came off that were important and starting lineups are important and all that stuff. I did still end up playing like some guy, like even though um, Thad Young wasn't starting, the coach was saying that he would fill in for minutes. So I found that out after I was off the show and that was a little bit, I tried, I posted it in our, in our discord, but my discord wasn't working. And then I tried posting it on the video chat channel. So hopefully people saw that at least. Um, but anyway, let's get on to tonight. Uh, Philadelphia, Detroit. Um, are you a little bit like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just always going to be concerned about Embiid on back-to-backs, uh, whether he plays, but assuming that he does play, it's going to be hard for me not to want to play him here. What other guys for Philadelphia are interesting for you? Because I am trying to decide, like, if I want to do the Thibel thing. I do think Shake Milton, you know, at some point, they're really going to extend him, but he still is in that 19-minute range. And on a back-to-back, -back, you wouldn't think this is the time they're going to do it. So I'm sort of stuck on the Philly guys and other Philly guys for right now, but I definitely have some interest in MB and I probably will play one or two of these other Philly guys, probably just one um, right now, I guess Thibel because the minutes feel secure, but it doesn't feel like a great, great play. So I'm sort of, I'm sort of stuck on that one. What do you, where do you see Philadelphia tonight? Um, on the Philadelphia side, I mean, currently I have Thibel rated as a, one of the stronger, you know, second strongest point per dollar play on the slate. But, but for me, I mean, I've always, I've always, yeah felt as though Matisse Thibel was the guy you were not supposed to play in fantasy. Um, he's usually in there for defense. Um, and he usually, I just, by my impression at least was that he's not really much of a fantasy player. So I, 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 I presume he's getting highly owned and projecting. Well, he must've done well yesterday. That's the best I can probably. No, no. Well, no, but he's played playing 30. When he, anybody who plays 30, who's projected to play 35 minutes is always going to project well. Yeah, I suppose. But I, I would, I would rather go with the other guys. I, I would rather try Shake Milton, I think. Um, uh, but I, I do like Shake Milton, by the way. Uh, I'm, not, I'm just coming up with that. And, 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 and Tyrese Maxey, I like him too. So for me, Thibault, Milton, and Maxey all rate to be really, really good plays. Um, 
Uh, and Thibel rates to be the best play, but I just have this way. I just have this have this idea that I'm not supposed to play him. I don't know why. We'll 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 talk through this at six o'clock. I think. Well, I always say that when there's tons of value, but like it's not like he's the same price as these other guys. And Shake yeah. Milton, who he is the same price as, like the the odds he's projected to play 23 minutes, which he's been projected the last three games. He hasn't played 20 minutes in the game yet this season. They said they're going to limit him, mm-hmm. and apparently they said they were going to start. They were going to start taking the what's it called off. But on a back-to-back on the, on a travel day, it doesn't feel like the time you're going to start doing that to me. Um, I think Maxi is is yeah, that's a total, that's a different price range. I mean, Mil- the thing is about Thibault is he's he and Milton are the only really like super cheap ones anymore. Um, on the other side, I will have an absolute lock on every single thing that with Cade Cunningham. I have no care at all that he had a terrible, terrible, terrible game the other night and was two for fourteen from the field, zero for nine from three. Um, I'm going to play Kate Cunningham in every lineup I have tonight. And it's basically going to be impossible to stop me to almost nothing I could see happening would stop me from doing that. Um, yeah, Kate Cunningham is rating for me to be the top uh, overall value on the slate. Uh, he's going to be extremely popular for, you know, for, for a good reason. I would actually, I would venture to say that he's a better play this today than he was the other day when I had him at hundred percent. Um, why? Because, well, the reason why I say that is it, it, the other day there was at least some, you could say that there was some doubt as to what kind of minutes they would run with him just because he hadn't done it yet, you know, but the fact that he, they threw him out there for a zillion minutes, you know, uh, remember when he, when, when the coach came out and they, they asked about minutes restrictions, he's like, no, whatever. I think people were like 70% sure that there was going to be no minutes restriction, but there was all still the little bit of, of doubt or whatever it is. And yet we still played him hundred percent. Now I'm pretty clear that there's no minutes restriction. And if they're going to let him roll, even when he's playing bad, um, I think he's now, you know, I, I think he's even more of a lock than he was. Uh, so, so for me, I'm, I'm just kind of with him. Yeah. He was a lock regardless of results. So I don't really care what happened. Yeah. And I, no, of course. That, that those games are going to happen one out of 20 times at, at war at most. Um, he may probably even less likely than that, to be honest with you. Um, but other than that, there's, there's guys that have some interest in here. Um, Kelly Olenek had a nice game earlier this year against them. He sees 5.1. Um, I know people will be, have some interest in Jeremy Grant. I really do think that Kate is going to slow down Jeremy Grant's usage. So I, I'm, I'm sort of staying a little bit away from that. Um, and Sadiq Bay is the other one I'm, I have some interest in. You could throw Killian Hayes into the mix, even though he and Cade kind of could, you could argue they take away somehow from each other. I, I think you could still play them together. Um, obviously their future is to plan on playing both these guys. It's kind of, they're a little bit redundant, but um, those are the guys I'm considering. Uh, Olenek, Cade is number one, obviously, then followed by Olenek, uh, Killian Hayes, and Sadiq Bey in that order. Yeah, I didn't, um, I didn't quite get to any of these other, these other Detroit guys, at least a first look. Um, I'll take another look at it. Um, yeah, you know what? Sadiq Bey is actually looking to be decent, um, but not any, a standout or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to take, I'm going to give these guys another look a little bit later for me right now. It's just going to be. Yeah. Cade Cunningham but as, as, as the play. One interesting thing people should think about is when they're going out there, if you're going to play shake Milton at whatever percentage, why would we play shake Milton who's playing 19 minutes when Killian Hayes has upside of 35 minutes, 33 minutes, let's say. And it just feels like a, there's something wrong in people's brain that doesn't, isn't putting that piece together a little bit. And if I see a guy who's going to be one fifty ownership, one tenth the ownership of somebody else at the same price, who's going to play more minutes, who's the point guard, <laughs> um, even though he could argue that for Cade, the point guard as well. Um, I just think that it's an interesting, like why, why are people all just stuck on this, this shake Milton idea? Because last year he, and still he looks like he creates things offensively and yet hasn't had a game that's, you know, as high as, as, uh, excuse me, uh, sorry, as high as uh, Killian Hayes. So I just think it's kind of interesting to think about it like that, even though I, I don't necessarily agree, disagree that shake Milton would be a better play if he had no minutes restriction. I just think that why are we not talking about Killian Hayes? So, okay. Um, I would like to start with the Utah game, if you don't mind. No, yeah, go ahead. Okay. So I'd like to tell everybody, Rudy Gobert is not out. Um, for those of you that are looking at DraftKings and see Rudy Gobert out or FanDuel, Rudy Gobert out, he is not out. This was actually just kind of a glitch in reporting. Um, somebody reported 
Rudy, Rudy out. And they meant Rudy Gay out. And people ran with it. And the way news gets shared, everybody just kind of jumped on it and went, said Rudy Gobert is out. Rudy Gobert is not out. I don't know why it is still in the DraftKings lobby. Um, there's a heel injury that Rudy Gay had suffered. Um, well, and, really bad. And, and, and so just letting everybody know Rudy Gobert is not out. And it's not in, I don't know why it's still in here. It's not Hassan Whiteside season. You know what I mean? So it's just, 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 I don't know what this is all about, but, but I, I, Hey, I, thanks to another podcast. Cause I was, as I was listening to them kind of break this whole thing down about how the news got spread or whatever it is. It is Rudy Gay. Who is in fact out, not Rudy Gobert. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Um, I, unfortunately for me, it never occurred to me that Rudy Gobert might be out. So. Right. Uh, <laughs> Good. Yeah. Thank God. So go um, ahead. Uh, what, what do you got? So, so, so I, so with that said, uh, I think Rudy Gobert is a very, very good play. <laughs> um, is he a great play? Um, hmm, I don't know. Is he better than Bam? I don't know. But uh, is he better than Bede? Different price tag. Uh, but I, I, I do like Gobert. Um, and he would be my favorite play on Utah. Now, I do see a questionable tag on Donovan Mitchell. And Donovan Mitchell... At the end of just you know, at the end of the first half, he was limping. He was limping to the locker room. Um, you know, he got he got his act together and he came back and obviously freaking smashed in the in the second half. But um, I I would I would I would render this as a legit questionable. Uh, I'll just I'll just say that. And if in fact he he is out, then then you know, then then we got to re reevaluate the whole universe, right? Um, but uh, I, that that's my comment on that. Uh, if he's out, then we're talking about Mike Conley and all this other stuff. But for now, it looks to me to be just Rudy Gobert out of that side of the game. And on the Atlanta side, I mean, it's hard to deny Ricky UVA at, at, at 4K coming off of his – well, you don't want to play him coming off of a stone ceiling. But guy's good, man, DeAndre Hunter, you know? Yeah, it's uh, awfully nice when you make all six of your threes. Yeah, well, you know what? Those count. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. but he's 4k. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like he's 6,000. I mean, he's 4k and he's going to make six of his to have a good performance. They're going to put him in the game. Right. So, um, so I, I do like him uh, as a value play. Um, aside from that, um, uh, not much. So for me, it'd be Deandre Hunter and Rudy Gobert. Yeah. I, uh, no Gobert for me. Uh, no interest against Capella particularly here. I, I, he has been playing really well, Gobert and you could argue for the, the, whatever the matchup doesn't matter. It just feels like a guy to play at 8,600 to me. It doesn't seem like anything special. Um, so I have him just sort of as a guy. Um, but maybe that maybe that is good enough tonight because I don't know if I love anything else. If Donovan Mitchell's out, uh, you're playing Conley, Clarkson, at least one of those two with Ingles probably, maybe more. Um, and uh, Bogdanovich for sure. Uh, DeAndre Hunter, like I'm just, I love DeAndre Hunter's actual game more than his fantasy game. He's another guy you don't really want to play for fantasy. And if yesterday doesn't prove it to you, I don't know what does. So like, you're going to have days where you can use him for fantasy when he makes six threes and he's going, he shoots hundred percent. That's uh, why don't we just play anybody and play roulette and we can do the same thing. If he was going to be low owned, I would be saying, Hey, play DeAndre Hunter. If he's going to end up 35% owned, which is right now where I think he's going to end up. Uh, I think we can do other things. The guy's had the same role every game this season and then he's yet to make value once. So because he does it one time, we're going to go there. And I had, I played a little bit of him last night. He's a guy I like to wiggle in when no one's going to play him. Same thing with uh, Matisse Thibel. But when everybody's going to play him, it just, it, it feels like we should be looking elsewhere for possible opportunity. I would say Bogdanovich in this game is interesting to me. I'm curious what Collins does in the back-to-back. -back. And I like Capella. He's had good matchups against Gobert in the past. Um, and I think that I'm, 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 I'm open to Capella. I, I don't know if I would like, might be a strong word because of the lack of plays on the slate. Maybe Hunter is a, is a better play than I'm not saying he's a bad play. I'm just saying, don't expect him to go out there and do that. I mean, he shot 10 of 11 from the field and six of six from three point range last night. His, his other statistics, he had two, all of two rebounds, zero assists, one steal and one block on the season. He only has six steals and blocks going into that game. On the season, he only had three assists going into that game. On the season, he only had 14 rebounds going into that game, or 15, 14 rebounds after the game. 
that's the, I don't know what kind of fantasy production we're expecting. So we're basically playing DeAndre Hunter as a just three point shooter. Just wanted to make that really clear for everybody because that is the role he has on this team right now. He's a three and D guy at the moment. Um, I believe in his game, but they just until John Collins is out, until Bogdanovich is out, until Trey Young is out, if Gallinari is going to play, all these guys take just make it so he has basically no role offensively. And he has no real rebounding role on this team with Capella and, and, and Collins. So while I believe in his game and he can do all the little things in general, he's not being asked to, and that's not what he's doing on this team. So you're just going to play him as a, as a play, as a guy who can hopefully hit six threes. It would be uh, Tory Craig's probably a bad example because Tory Craig has been just lighting the world on fire, but Tory Craig, that's the kind of play it is. It's Josh Akogi. That's the kind of play it is right now for me, but I'm not saying I'm not going to play him because we don't, he is cheap but I don't see him doing anything else this season. You can look at it. He hasn't had more than three rebounds in the game. Hasn't had more than one assist in the game. So, and he doesn't score unless he's making open threes. So, so just, just, we'll just keep that in mind. That's about the only thing I would say. I really do encourage everybody to come uh, to the six o'clock uh, stream where, where we go over more of this stuff. Cause this is where we kind of, or at least for me, uh, I mean, I, where I blend in kind of like the projection work and numbers work with these all too critical you know, actual basketball observations that really, you know, separate the really good lineups for the, from the really crappy ones. And, and that's uh, like, if this were going on at like at six o'clock right now, I would literally be just like, I don't want to say Xing out DeAndre Hunter, but yeah. at least, at least like kind of trimming him back just because again, it's not all about numbers and projections. It's about these kinds of uh, these kinds of analysis, which is, which is my Bobby's the best. Anyway, uh, want to move on to Boston, Miami. Yeah, let's do it. So Boston, Miami, the Miami side, I, I just got three guys I guess I got want to talk about. One is um is Bam and Butler. Well, Bam and Butler are gonna rate to be pretty good plays. Um uh, I mean for good reason. And the other guy, I mean, he's I mean, you were on him, I guess, at least a thousand DraftKings points ago. And at some point he's gonna be kind of expensive, but freaking Tyler Hero has been just kind of just doing it, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you could do it at sixty seven hundred. But, you know, it's something to at least keep an eye on. Um, the other thing that I think is really important for, for, for today is that Boston being on a back-to-back, you got to watch and see if Al Horford's going to be playing or not, I think. So Great. if Al Horford is, is out, then I think that, um, that Robert Williams becomes kind of a play, um, or at least more viable. And I think that Al Horford is in. Uh, Al Horford might continue to still be a play. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know why they would, I don't see I don't know why they would play him. I mean, he's playing great and they're playing Miami. Why wouldn't they play him? But you know, he's older and maybe they just, they're just on a non back-to-back regimen with him. So that is, that is, that is a bit of news out of the Boston side that, that you want to keep an eye on. And uh, uh, as far as actual Boston players, I don't really have any of them rating all that high. Tatum would be my best, but I'm not really getting him. Yeah, um, so I'm going to make this my call game of the night. Um, I nailed the last one, Sheets. Uh, Franco Bank got in on it, and he put, he put 1,000 pounds on, uh, on Cleveland to win at 3-1. to one. Oh, and really? Cleveland beat, Cleveland beat Portland last night. Wow. Um, this is another one I want to get behind. I, I think that Miami is going to just absolutely torch Boston in this game. <laughs> okay. Really, I don't think this game is going to be within 10 points. I don't think it'll be within 15, maybe some weird stuff at the end, but I really think Miami is going to torch them unless you get like a, a, an all time, like shooting performance. I just think Miami looks so dialed in right now. Um, so that's where I am. And uh, with that, it's going to make it really hard for me to play anybody on Boston outside of Robert Williams. If there's no Horford, actually, if there is Horford, I still have some interest in him. Um, I think Horford, there's a potential that they could play him and try to, you know, but he, you know, it's, it's a back-to-back for an older guy and maybe he's not playing as well. Maybe the energy of Williams gets it going. I, I'm just thinking out loud, like, because I do think that he is a viable play. Um, although it's obviously not a great matchup, but at the same time, they're going to need size in that not great matchup. I do prefer Bam to uh, go bear at the moment. Um, unless something changes later that that's making me stack that Utah Atlanta game, which is not very possible. I'm probably going to stick with that take. Uh, if we want to talk about guys who are 4K, why would we, you know, we could, we could play Duncan Robinson probably at a third, maybe even a quarter of the ownership of uh, DeAndre Hunter. And basically in their current role, they're doing the exact same thing. And as good of a shooter as DeAndre Hunter is, Duncan Robinson is a much better shooter. Um, 
In fact, you could argue he's one of the best five shooters in the NBA. So to that note, why wouldn't we be considering Duncan Robinson over DeAndre Hunter, just the way that I'm thinking about it? So that's why I'm going to put a, him on my list. And it, truth be told, in my first build, when I make it last night, made it last night, I did put Hunter in it, just made a made sense and fit. But this is just the way that I'm thinking about it, you know, going through all the all the numbers and, and the roles on their team. And of course, it may all be premature because John Collins might be announced out, which is going to make DeAndre Hunter a much better play. Um, but at the moment, I currently think that I'll try to try to get Duncan Robinson over him. If you're going to talk about the two of them, basically playing the same role. Um, Tyler Hero, like, is a you know the, the thing. One, some of the things are it's so encouraging, like to watch. I, I, I felt really good about him this year. I felt really good about him as a scorer. I still do. The lack of other numbers are a little bit alarming. Um, sometimes, I mean, like the guy shot 11 for 20. Usually when a guy shoots 11 for 20, you want him to more than 5X their salary in 6,900. And that's just what I would say is that he could have like a, a hot shooting night and still just barely get you there. Uh, it doesn't feel like a game that Jimmy Butler has to go nuts. However, he's just simply been great all year. I'm probably not going to use him. Uh, I think my highest level of interest is, is, is still going to be Bam over here and uh, Bam and Duncan Robinson. You know, uh, Bam in his last game, it's really funny. And you, you, you've done this uh, a lot. Bam got off to a really, really bad start in his first rotation. He, I think, had negative 0.5 fantasy points. Um, oh, yeah, he did. After his first rotation. And, and as usual, you know, what happens is the entire DFS Twitter sphere, whatever, just goes freaking ballistic, right? And um, doesn't matter. Still have 45. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, I, I, uh, sounds good to me. Uh, you want to move on to Houston Phoenix? Yeah, my favorite, by the way, and guys, I love when we're active in Discord, but anybody who says, well, we're in the first quarter of the first wave of games, God, I really could have done something tonight, if only so-and-so. I, I, I'm seriously, those are the people I just completely tune out, and I have no interest in talking to ever again, because it is the most obnoxious thing about DFS. It's, if I only did this in the first quarter, it's it's just so crazy how much how much longer the game is, and um, and also how little relevance that has to anything going on. Um, I'm much more inter interested in the back and forth and, oh man, I can't believe what a start for this guy or what, how horrible right. it was a start. But to say that if I had only made this decision, I could have been somewhere. It happens all the time in our NFL slot. I'm not going to put play fingers, but it's uh, hilarious to me. I think it's really, really, really funny. Um, anyway, we can move on to uh, Houston Phoenix. So I'm going to throw a little bit of bias in here. So, so I, um, uh, I, I had, I had a pretty good run the other night with, um, with uh with chris paul and i i didn't really i never really played chris paul um and every single time i do i, I always seem to be happy that i do for some reason like, like he um he does a lot when he's on the court i mean he gets rebounds also now he's he, maybe he always did i just I never really played him so i really wouldn't know um get assists he even though you know he doesn't take a lot of threes right he, he's very very efficient it seems at least with his mid with his mid-rangers whatever it is and he played a bunch of minutes in that last game. Um, but I, I would like to point out that um, there was somebody that was, I think Cameron Payne was not there in that game. Yeah. Um, and that I only wonder, game. and I just wonder if, 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 if he comes back, if, if maybe, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe the minutes projections on, on Chris Paul might be a little aggressive. You know what I mean? Um, because Chris Paul is kind of, I don't say old, whatever, but, but he's someone that I don't think they'd want to run out 38 minutes in, the, in a regular season. They'd have to. And against Houston, you'd like to think that they wouldn't, you know, they hopefully wouldn't need to run him out for 38 minutes. So I think that Chris Paul might be a little over projected today. Um, not that he's projected that great, but I'd probably be on the, on the side of fading him. Like I'm looking at a big ownership projection on him for some reason. I, I can't imagine why that would be. Well, it's a short slate, I suppose. Um, so I probably want to fade him. Um, now, obviously, the big news is is what happens with DeAndre Ayton. Okay, so what 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 happened in the last game was when he was ruled out. Um, McGee started, and and Frank Kaminsky had the game. You know, um, I'm not that not that McGee didn't have a good game, also, right? Because he's a big you know point per minute guy, whatever. But um, but Kaminsky was the man, and uh, if um, in fact Ayton is out again. I hate to be recency biased, but it'd be kind of silly to not try Kaminsky again. You know, uh, 
he might even start. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but so again, we do have to we do have to look at it. I'm currently projecting eight is in, but that doesn't mean he's going to be in if I'm projecting him as in. Um, so we got to keep an eye on that. And again, it's a ten o'clock game, and I don't know when they're going to announce that or whatever it is. So um, the other guy, by the way, who had just an atrocious game the other day. And again, I was just following this. Devin Booker was just bad, like the whole game until like the final like two minutes where he basically closed it out. He scored the last like twelve points in the game or something like that. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I think there's a lot of a lot of risk in this game. I, I would I would say that Cameron Johnson. And he was bad also, as far as I was concerned. Um, he remains in play. Uh, I think he uh, – Aiden is out. I think he remains in play. Um, and then on the Houston side – I don't know if you want to jump over that. But on the Houston side, I think Darius Baisley and Josh Giddy uh, both uh, are decent values. I think if Dork comes, is, is in, he's good at 4,400. But uh, you know, this game definitely has a lot of risk to it in general. I would say eight was out. How many games you're, you're going through? Two games here. Phoenix, Houston. Houston? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean. I'm sorry about that. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I got I got the teams confused. Sorry. About I don't know. So, so Houston on the Houston side. I keep thinking Baisley was there for something. So Houston, I don't like. Uh, I guess I don't like anybody. So for me, it's 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 either Cam Johnson, maybe Kaminsky, um, and maybe this game is just kind of a fade. I love uh, the Houston guys. Um, Ooh, what do we got? Kevin Porter Jr., Jalen Green, um, I think are going to be guys who I play in at least one of them, or if not both, in most of my life. Wow, okay. Um, I don't really love a whole lot else on this slate, so I want guys who are just going to soak up usage, and they happen to both be on the same team, and there's not really anyone else outside of Christian Wood who does a whole lot, and yet no one wants to play Christian Wood. I would happily play Christian Wood in this game. Um, Christian Wood coming off a monster game against the Lakers. It's not an easy team to get 55 against, and he did it. Um, I think there's a real ceiling here. I don't think this game stays close, which makes me worried for all those guys. But I, I wouldn't even think about playing. This is not a game that I, I, I would not even – I don't. Chris Paul is not on my radar. Um, I don't think okay. there's any chance I'd play him on DraftKings. Okay. Um, I, I, but I really like those two – Those the, the mainly the, the Porter and Jalen Green. Not necessarily together, but you could do it together. Uh, I also think that there is some merit to Deshaun Tate, uh, but Christian Wood would be my third favorite from that side. And then Sangoon is going to have a, a big game. This guy's really good. Like, I wish they would get him some more minutes. And I know it's hard to, well, it's hard to do in, in a way because Christian Wood is there. They sort of cross over. They, they can't, it's hard for them to, to play a ton together, although they can play some together. Um, but I, I, I'm open to Sangoon also as a value um, instead of the other guys we talked about. If Aiton's out, um, go right back to JaVale McGee. Uh, Kaminsky is fine as another play, but I, I don't think he'll – I mean, I don't think – I don't think there's, there's a world where they would start him against Wood, but maybe they would. Um, I don't know. So, so I, I, I personally uh, – but if, if Aiton is back, I think your simplest play is just play Aiton. And, um, yeah. yeah, that's pretty much, you know, what I would go with. And then I think Mikael Bridges at 5,100 is reasonable – uh, and Crowder is reasonable enough, especially on FanDuel where he's a little cheaper. But just, nothing exciting. This is not a very exciting slate, by the way. There's not like a just, bunch of great early yeah, stadiums. Just notes. so you guys know, again, I can't, I'm not going to make this a habit. It's not going to be all the time. But because of the way the games are spread out in my particular schedule tonight, I am going to be able to, to sneak in there at like 9 o'clock or 9.30 to update stuff. Um, okay. and, and so if, if they don't release that 8 news until you know between 9 and 10 o'clock, I will be able to get in there and 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 uh, and update that stuff. My you know my wife's going to be out. I'm going to be out, you know home not doing that much, so I'll be able to 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 take care of that. Um, uh, yeah, I agree with you. That's that's not a particularly great, great slate. Maybe maybe you're right. Maybe you're supposed to find some game. You know what I mean? And just hope it goes off. You you now what I just said about Devin Booker having a bad game. Maybe you want to play a bunch of these Houston's. Hope it does stay close, and maybe run it back with Booker. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's, I think that's completely reasonable. Okay. Um, OKC, okay, so you, you want to talk about OKC? Okay, and yeah. So as I was as I was starting off saying, um, you know, before I realized I was in the wrong game, uh, before you realized <laughs> I was in the wrong game, Giddy's pretty good. <laughs> uh, uh, I like really him. Uh, I like him in basketball. I like him in fantasy. You know, he's uh, kind of like him. And then I like Baisley, as I mentioned before, uh, and Shea is. Dude, Shea's added these like step back threes, and and he's uh, 
He's uh, he's good, man. He, he might get paid one of these days. I don't know. Uh, yeah, he he did get paid. No, but maybe on another team also. Maybe he'll maybe he'll win one day. Well, yeah, um, maybe I, it would be on this team though. I mean, that, that's yeah. he's supposed to be the guy they're keeping. They, he, they tried to trade him and there's and Giddy basically. Well, the, him in the number six overall pick for Cade Cunningham, and but Detroit said no, oh, which really? is a pretty, that's pretty, pretty, pretty bold trade. And, wow. and, and I think the right thing to do by Detroit's standards, but still, it was pretty interesting. Anyway, go wow. ahead. Sorry. So, so I like all. I mean, look, this game stays close. I like all three of those guys. Um, and then, uh, I mean, what do you do? All these, all three of these Lakers play. I mean, it is a nice spot to rest somebody if they felt like they need they felt like they needed to. Yeah. Um, so again, we'll we'll keep an eye on that. I have no reason to believe anybody sits, but I, I still see those Q tags on these guys sometimes, and I got to think about it. Um, if all three of them play, it's just kind of be tough to play any of them. You know, it's just it's a it's an uninspiring spread game, and it just doesn't seem like the type of game where one of them would particularly go ballistic but is this one of those like five game slates where you just want the raw points i mean i don't know what do you what do you think about that yeah the way it's shaping up to be um avery bradley by the way is a guy who's 3k who's going to play a bunch of minutes okay that's worth um yeah i i i I don't know it's 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 my my tendency would be to treat this like we did the other night on the five gamer and and try to try to play guys in the evening game as much as possible because if we don't have the eight news, which like off the bat, you immediately are saying, well, they're playing, they're playing Houston. Do we really need to play him in this matchup? You know what I mean? Like, and the Lakers, okay. I know LeBron's fine and being back. Maybe we give Anthony Davis a break on this day. Um, but the Lakers are trying to really put it together. So they're trying to get everything down. It is weird how they shot Russell Westbrook's price through the roof for some reason. Um, sort of like speculating that someone's going to sit. And they shot Anthony Davis's price up as well. So uh, they they definitely hired. They definitely did some work um, with with their whole all their algorithms or all their approach this year. Uh, I don't know exactly. No, what no they but did. they have a thing with the Lakers where on the back to backs every time so far they've priced them up like a thousand more. It's just the Lakers. It's not every other team. They're because they're playing. They're playing for the accounting for the potential city. Okay. Um, which makes the guys like even harder to play, <laughs> you know, if they all three play right. and they're hard enough to play as it is where they all three play. I would say that if there was, you know, I don't know. I don't think Westbrook or AD are that bad of plays here or, or, Le- or even LeBron, but LeBron would be my least interest of, of the three of them. Uh, and I don't know if I can play the, the truth is they look bad enough, even though they're winning most of the time to where you think other teams can stay in games with them. But I don't know. It's, 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 this could be a stacking game if you wanted to get weird with it and play Giddy, Shea, Dort, maybe even Baisley, and then run it back with one or two of the big guys and hope one guy sits. Um, but then you also could switch over to the, to the Houston Phoenix game, depending on what happens with Aiton. Right. Um, so it's an interesting like option, and that's the way I'm sort of going to probably approach this slate. Um, I do think that the only guys I need to have from the early games, for sure, I do think Embiid is a great play, but it does worry me a little bit, the back-to-back. I think Cade Cunningham is the guy I know I need to have from that game. I don't really know that I need to have anybody else at the moment. Once we hear about Donovan Mitchell, that it may all change. Once we hear about, um, if we hear about uh, uh, DeAndre Ayton, that'll, you know, change for that later slate. Uh, you know, should anything happen to Boston, like a uh, Horford sitting on a back-to-back, that should that would change something. I don't know if Horford will sit on the back-to-back. By the way, Boston is a horrible mess, and uh, he sort of is the, the one piece that's sort of maybe keeping it together right now. Um, is Horford a good enough defensive player that we have to, that it's going to impact how much we want to play Bam or not really? No. Okay. I mean, even at his best, when he was a good, really good defender, like Bam is a. He's a, he's a giant. I don't think anybody, I mean, I just told you, I love Capella and like he's playing against Gobert. I, I don't give these guys that kind of credit. They, and right. as good of a defender as Gobert is, has almost nothing to do with one-on-one stuff. Although I did, you know what I was mad about Chicha on this one? I did say it before last night. I said, MB, you know, uh, what's his name? Gives Embiid struggles. Uh, uh, Vucevic. And I still played Embiid in three uh, of my yeah. five big buy-ins. And I was like, what am I doing? He was just, it was too tempting. Anyway. All right, so that's pretty much all my thoughts. By the way, you know, you know what's not happening, by the way. What's that? These big, big time studs are not are, are not are not 
No, no, they're not performing. It's early in the season. Yeah. I mean, still, you got Jokic who had 60 last night. It was – Because meanwhile, him. meanwhile, he was – it was like – he was like – I don't know if you saw the end of the game. He was like 80% to have 80. I mean, like, they, they, he had a five-foot turnarounder down two with one second to go. That was a lock to go in and go to overtime. Oh, and it man. just it somehow didn't go in. It was, oh, like, it was literally like you saw it. I'm like, okay, this is it. And it just, it, and it was, it was, uh, it was, uh, that would have been, that would have been an 80 ball, I think. It would, it would have been a, a shot for me. I had, I was like, I think I was in like 30th place in the shoot around. And I had a lot, my, 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 the only guys I had left were the, was I had the Jokic. I had, uh, I had, what's his name, um, who, who went off last night, who I kept talking, Jaron Jackson Jr. Right. 44, I think he had. And yeah. I also had, uh, I also had Moran in that lineup. So the, if you get an overtime out of those three guys, especially because yeah. we're all, Jokic was the highest owned at 11%. John, you know, the, the other guys were like 5%, 4%. I was like, right. oh, maybe I got a shot. Anyway. All right, guys. Well, good luck to everybody. We will be with you later. And uh, yeah, it's, it's always tough to make sense of the early slates. I just think you just, you know, it's, it's a feeling out. And this is where, where we're at currently process. But uh, we'll have a better feel for it by 6 p.m. And once we have a little more information. All right. Uh, you want to send a showdown thing? Yep. Good luck to everybody.